Our first guest came to prominence as a co-host of Yo! MTV Bear Apps, but today he's blazing a new path as a diabetes advocate with his very own foundation, Dr. Dre's Victory Foundation on LinkedIn, and the Health and Wellness Revolution. Please welcome Dr. Dre to Diabetes Late Night. Hello, Dr. Dre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm. Wow, I uh, appreciate you know, that. You, I mean, we should tell everyone this is old, an old hat for you because you actually started your career in working in radio in Long Island and uh, started yes, DJing, and that's how Yo MTV Raps took off. Like um, people can't believe that we had you on the show. So I want to talk about the music first before we get into the diabetes. Sure. Did you think when you were working with Ed Lover and Yo MTV Raps that you were going to be ushering this whole new um, genre of music to the world? I mean, it is, it's an incredible moment in music history what you were able to accomplish. Yes, it was a blessing and also was something that we could foretell because with my work at uh, Adelphi University's WBAU with such classmates as Mr. Bill Stephanie and Mr. Uh, Carlton right now, also known as Chuck D from Public Enemy, Howard McGregor, and myself <clears throat> in the early black music class with uh, the late great Dr. Andre Strobert, we had these visions of what this could possibly be, and this is in the early 80s. And being that we were all just street DJs with my group, The Concept, with my man T Money, and Chuck's group, Spectrum City, featuring uh, people like um, uh, Keith Shockley, Hank Shockley, and, of course, uh, MC DJ Flavor, also known as Flavor Flav. We had these ideas, and uh, Butch Cassidy, I can't forget Butch Cassidy. Um, we all had these ideas that what we were doing needed a larger audience. That's why we first started doing park jams and bringing thousands and thousands of people together because we would go out and be local promoters of our music and our, 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 our work, which was being DJs and bringing great music like Luther, I mean, when you mentioned earlier about Luther and the U.K. discovering him, his most popular first, his fourth album was the greatest. No, Luther was great from the beginning of his career when he was with Change and The Glow of Love and those songs to when he uh, released his first huge single, Never Too Much. So, yeah, we knew all of that music. We understood that. But the thing is this burgeoning thing called rap music that came from the street and the grit and the street poetry, we all loved Muhammad Ali because Muhammad Ali would rhyme with, from, with Bundini Brown. But the thing that we, we, we took is we put the music next to it. So you had great, um, great amazing artists like Spoonie G, The Treacherous Three, Grandmaster Flash and The Furious Five, Curtis Blow, the Run DMCs of the world who were emerging, the LO Cool J's. And I was blessed to be able to DJ with a group called The Beastie Boys for you and actually write a song on um, Raising Hell, Run DMC's third multi-platinum album called Proud to be Black. So, yeah, we kind of knew what we were doing. So when I hooked up with Ed Lover in 89, to uh, co-host on Yo! TV Raps. I've been pretty seasoned as far as being as far as a, a broadcaster, as far as an artist, as far as a DJ, and I was very proud of what was going on. So this was just like a, we were actually just knocking down that door that MTV was letting us walk through. So we were blessed with Peter Darty and Ted Demi giving us those opportunities. I mean, it's a phenomenal story, and I know uh, we were just talking before the show started that people, you're writing a book about your experience that people could find out more about this. So how can people get the book about your experience on your MTV rap? I understand it's just the first couple of years that you're chronicling. Well, the book, the book comes out later this year. It's called The Dr. Dre Episodes, 1989 to 1995, which chronicles my life on MTV. And if you understood MTV at that time, we were pretty much being the uh, launch case of will they support this music, you know, visually. Uh, Fab Five Freddy was the original host of the weekend version of Yo! MTV Raps, and it was Run DMC who actually did the pilot along with the great um, Jam Master J at the Nassau Coliseum <clears throat> at the Def Jam tour show. When we were asked to be a part of it, you got to go to the book. So we'll let you know more about the book as we go along because I have a feeling you and I will be talking a long time as we, you know, continue this legacy and this wonderful life of Luther Vandross. I love it. I would love that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Luther and your shared experience because both of you were living with, di are living with diabetes, Luther had type 2 diabetes, and you both had these phenomenal careers. 
and a lot of demands put on you, which sometimes kind of pushes diabetes to the sign or even the warning sign. Your own story of uh, your experience living with diabetes kind of, kind of goes back to about 2008. Can you tell us how uh, you first found out your, what happened that led to your initial diagnosis of type 2 diabetes? Well, as everyone knows, when you have kids, you yell and scream at them and say, don't walk around the house without your shoes on. Make sure you have your shoes on. So one day I thought I was going to be clever, and I was waking my daughter up to go to school, so I decided to walk up the stairs. Guess what? Without my flip-flops, without my shoes, whatever you want to call it, and I stepped on what's called a carpet tack, and <clears throat> it uh, cut my big toe. And when I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, man, how did I do this? And I realized I must have stepped on this carpet tack because we just removed the carpets, getting ready to put new carpets down. And um, I thought I cared for it properly with some neosporin and putting the right bandage on it, and it would go away. But instead, I got an infection behind what you thought was healing. And in doing that, and I went to the doctor, and I started getting a fever. And uh, after a long period of time, my sister took me to the hospital, only to find out that I was definitely a borderline diabetic, and I had to uh, eventually have my uh, big toe removed. And that was exactly how the ball got started. And then you start to, you know, do what you call um, uh, depression, dilemma, anxiety. But I always felt that that's not going to help anything. What you got to do is face it head on and figure, figure out how to fix that situation. And because of my behavior and because of what I was doing for a living, like you said, when you put the pressures on uh, living at the time, you fail to sit there. As long as you can get up and move your two feet forward, you figure, I'm healthy, I can keep going, I can keep going. And that's why I stress we really have to make sure that we uh, pay attention to our health because without our health, there's nothing that you, you're going to have. It just becomes a zero. So my, my tale is a cautionary tale, but it's also a tale of uh, being forward-thinking, uh, also a tale of taking control of your life, and that's why I developed the health and wellness revolution as far as to get people to understand that uh, we have to take back our homeostasis. We have to take back our humanity. And it's very important because – the thing we deal with with this event that goes under my Dr. Dre Victory Foundation is that we want to deal with uh, nutrition and fitness. We want to deal with climate change. We want to deal with homelessness. We want to deal with economic disparities. We want to deal with um, uh, bringing the cost of living down so that the world we can exist. And also, with right now, we're dealing with this new virus that's going around the world. We don't want to panic people. We want to make people more aware. And that's the biggest thing that I was missing when I was going through this long research process to start turning my illness into a wellness and making myself learn there's more than just the pharmaceutical way. There's a lot of things in holistic. Our goal is to put these options on the table, to create a large coalition of people from different factions that have all different solutions to, to how to deal with uh, diabetes and present it to the world that are here. Dear solutions, here's things you put on the table. If you have a problem, you have a, a large consulting group that we can put together and people can reach out, and then you can actually find better ways to manage and then maybe find a better way to actually solve the problem and not only just reverse this thing, but we can also help eliminate that. And that first starts with what we put in our, in our gums. And I, I've also uh, gone to a very plant life, plant life um, uh, diet, whatever, however you want to, want to say it like that. And I also was blessed with after a long, many years of researching and discussing, uh, I found a um, book and I found another young man who helped put me on a path. And a lot of people I walked, I went to and asked for their help. Uh, they all said, yeah, Dr. Trey, oh, my God, we got to help you. And, oh. and everybody always felt this like semi-pity for me. I said, pity's not going to help this. Information, growth, and participation We'll help find a solution. Sure we'll help find I mean, a one way. of the things that hit me with um, Luther the stroke was I didn't even I had no uh, knowledge prior to the fact that stroke was linked to diabetes, and I feel like part of your story is also about vision loss, which is something that I think a lot of people don't realize how vision loss is linked to diabetes. So tell us a little bit about this new journey you're on now, where you're um, because you've been so vocal about vision loss, your vision loss related to the diabetes. I want, I want to help uh, raise awareness for those two things for our listeners tonight. Thank you. Simple and plain. Uh, when I was diagnosed with being a type 2 diabetic, um, what happens is they, they tell you all the time you should go to an optometrist to get your eyes checked all the time. 
because you have a very strong possibility of losing your eyesight to the disease. And that's pretty much what happened to me because I got a, uh, my vision started to get a little fuzzy. And once I learned, I had to took the key down and stop driving. And I went to uh, a doctor and I started having laser surgery. And they said, well, we're going to try retinopathy with you to reattach your retinas so that you may not lose your vision, but it's a 50-50 chance. And in that 50-50 chance, um, I develop what you call scar tissue alongside of it. So I get what you call fluttering in and out of vision, where I see shapes, I see heat signatures, and sometimes my sight goes back where it's very clear. It's like, wow, I can really see again. And then it flutters out. That's all due to the complications of diabetes. So inside of my uh, Dr. Ray Victory Foundation, we have three parts. The first part is called the VIC, which means the visually impaired can, meaning that we have we still have abilities and we still have a brain and we still have abilities to do things. So don't cut us off and act like, oh, well, they're blind, they can't do anything. There's so many great things with the technology that exists today that visually impaired people can do. I still read books. I can still produce music. I still can uh, uh, listen to conferences and participate in things. But, yeah, but when you see me on a camera and if I'm holding it myself and I'm upside down, you can have a good laugh because I can't tell. But the second part of the foundation is called the Diabetic Avengers. And basically it goes back to what I was saying, creating a coalition of different folks to find best solutions or best options for everybody to be a part of it and discussing the successes and sometimes the, the back steps or the, mis, you know, the missteps and how to, how to change that. The third part is, of course, the event angle, which is the diabetic, I mean the, hip, <clears throat> the health and wellness revolution campaign, which is, as I described earlier, that's where we put everything into action. 